Uh, I'm a postdoc at Los Alamos who works on this project. And let me first acknowledge uh, my collaborators. It's Vadim Reuterstein, who is a uh, PI of Blue Water Projects, and uh, Gianluca Delzana and Gianmarco Manzini, who work with me at Los Alamos. Uh, so we used blue water to study plasma turbulence. Plasma is uh, pervasive in nature and laboratory. It's everywhere in fusion devices, ion propulsion, whatnot, and it's ubiquitous in nature as well, astrophysical system or nearby space. And uh, unlike fluids, collisions in plasma are very rare and they cannot establish a uh, thermodynamic equilibrium. So waves usually appear uh, to do that. And um, uh, moreover, plasma usually has a lot of eigenmods. And uh, thus, it's usually in, tur in turbulent state. And uh, it is difficult to study turbulence. One of the reasons is because it has a lot of scales. For example, um, this figure at the bottom uh, shows measurements of turbulent spectra in solar wind, uh, where a lot of mods are excited with uh, scale separation, I don't know, like eight or something orders of magnitude, but actually these figures continues to the right, it just uh, scales sp sparse wider. And uh, uh, solar wind is the best accessible example of large-scale astrophysical plasma turbulence. Uh, and the project goal was to study solar wind with numerical uh, tools uh, using blue water in challenging regimes. Uh, the project is almost at end and uh, we are lo already looking into the next steps, uh, uh, vi which is uh, to develop new tools uh, to perform even bigger simulations. And this is today's uh, topic. So we are solving glass of Maxwell system of equations, uh, which is microscopic description of plasma, which is very heavy, but sometimes necessary in different regimes. And unfortunately, uh, this system is very difficult to solve due to different reasons. First of all, it's very high dimensional. So it's, uh, it's six dimensional phase space plus time. So enormous computational load. It's also nonlinear, so there are no turbulent solution, of course. And uh, in presence of m strong magnetic fields, it's also very anisotropic, which also does not help. And of course, plasma intrinsically is, has very uh, large scale separation in, in time and in space, which also varies eight, 10 orders of magnitude. Uh, the figure is just an example of sp some space physics uh, parameters uh, around Earth. Uh, there are numerous ways to solve loss of Maxwell system equation, but probably the most popular is particle and cell, uh, where phase space is discretized as macro particles. Uh, it's simple and robust methods, people love it. Um, and uh, if you need some uh, not very accurate results, it's very fast in comparison to other methods. However, it has statistical noise, uh, which, uh, which makes it very difficult to get very precise results and uh, to achieve high uh, signal to noise ratio. And uh, another limitation that most of existing implementations are explicit. Uh, there, are, there are other approaches like uh, discretizing the phase space on Eulerian grid and uh, uh, it, it solves problem of statistical noise. However, you cannot do it naively discretizing the whole six dimensional phase space because it's prohibitive. If you throw thousand points in every direction, it would be eight exabytes of data or something like this ridiculous. So you need to do something smarter and that's what we are trying to do with transform methods uh, where the phase space is discretized with spectral expansion or moment like expansion. People experimented with such techniques before in the 70s uh, and uh, unfortunately it wasn't very efficient at the time. Some optimizations and techniques were not available. Uh, and uh, when we had slow computers, uh, 
just to get some dirty results, it was much more efficient with particle, particles methods. However, the main advantage of such techniques uh, is that you can cook up such expansion uh, that it will have fluid uh, kinetic coupling, meaning that uh, lower order moments would kind of describe macroscopic, macroscopic dynamics of the plasma. And when you increase the resolution, um, you in incorporate as more and more microscopic physics. Uh, and it may be the optimal way to incorporate uh, microscopic physics into large scale simulations. So a little bit more precisely, to discretize the velocity space, uh, we expand our distribution function in spectral series with asymmetrically weighted Hermite polynomials. And they have those, this uh, fluid coupling. Essentially, those expansion coefficient Cs first corresponds to fluid moments like density, velocity, temperature, and so on. So if you just use four moments in each direction, you would get something like advanced MHD with even some kinetic effects. And when you include number of moments, you incorporate more and more kinetic effects. Uh, this efficient representation of the velocity space allows to sp uh, save a lot of degrees of freedom. For the space discretization, we use discontinuous Galerkin, which is you can mo uh, model discontinuous Galerkin, which is like spectral expansion in each cell. So you have a lot of spatial cells, and in each cell you expand it in a little series inside this cell. It's also very accurate methods. You can get any order. Uh, it also handles shocks and non-trivial geometry very well, and. Uh, what is important is that it's a very local method, so it has very good parallel scaling. Um, in our framework, uh, we also deal with different time discretization, explicit or implicit as needed. So explicit can be very good for some problems and very fast, but usually in plasmas you need to skip scales and you need to have implicit methods as well. Moreover, implicit methods are usually more conservative or, or symplectic. Uh, just expanding a little bit about different discretizations. We fa our favorite so far is asymmetrically weighted Hermite polynomials, which has this fluid coupling, uh, and it also has very nice conservative properties. Unfortunately, uh, it does not have guaranteed stability. There is no theorem which proves that this method is always stable. So we are still looking for other expansions. For example, we played with symmetri symmetrically weighted Hermite polynomials, which is worse. It doesn't have fluid coupling or good conservation properties, but it's stable. <laughs> uh, and uh, so we experiment. And probably a good solution would be Legendre polynomials, which has fluid coupling. At, at, at the beginning, Legendre polynomials are similar to symmetrically weighted Hermite polynomials. They have fluid coupling and conservation properties, and they are not stable. But uh, there is some mathematical trick you can play to sacrifice a little bit of conservation properties and get some stabi stability guarantees. So maybe in the future we will move uh, to Legendre polynomials. For coordinate space, we also experimented with different approaches. Uh, probably first one was uh, pseudo-spectral method based on Fourier methods. This is a nice method, very accurate, uh, and uh, very nice conserv conservation properties and so on. However, it has global nature and it does not scale very well. So if it's on one node, it's perfect. You go faster and faster, it kind of becomes worse and worse. So for medium size problems, small problems, it's very good. But uh, for now, we stay with discontinuous Galerkin, which was great so far. It scales well, has conservation, uh, conservation properties and um, arbitrary order. There are some heavy uh, limitations maybe with comparison to the finite volume, which is very similar, like it's maybe somewhat heavy, but it scales well, and maybe restrictive CFL condition if you increase order too much. However, for implicit method, it doesn't really matter. Um, here are some uh, 
specifics on implementation. So the main implementation I worked on is this discontinuous Galerkin, which is fully 3D 3V based on MPI and Petsy solvers. It has range of different uh, explicit uh, uh, time integration solvers as well as implicit time integrations which conserves um, energy and mass. Uh, to do implicit time step, we use uh, Jacobian free Newton Krylov coupled with preconditioned GMRS or BCGS. Uh, I'm still working on optimizing preconditioning, but uh, uh, I don't do anything fancy for now, mostly uh, ILU and uh, block Jacobi. Uh, but block Jacobi could be very nice for DG because it's very uh, dense and local method. Uh, there are other implementations we experimented, and I listed it here. Uh, so probably the most mature is Fourier and Hermit implementation, which is also fully parallel and uh, works on uh, large computers, whatnot. Uh, so I tested the DG version on up to something 37,000 cores, and it scales pretty well, and this is to this really problem, which I will go on in a minute, describing it. Um, but so far, it scales pretty well. Um, so let me show you some example uh, of uh, two-dimensional plasma turbulence, or Zach Tang vortex. It's classical plasma test where you excite two magnetic vortices which collapse and form thin current sheets, uh, which then reconnect. And uh, we compare it with uh, uh, particle in cell, which is fully kinetic. And for our, for our code, we used uh, 10 uh, Hermite polynomials in each direction for the velocity space. And the agreement is pretty well. Uh, we don't need as large uh, mesh for, P, uh, for uh, spectral method as for peak. Um, but I think uh, first figure is discontinuous Galerkin of first order, so it's second order. Uh, second figure is third order discontinuous Galerkin, and the third figure is particle and cell. More, uh, more interesting results are uh, seen on the spectrum. So the left figure is magnetic field spectrum of fluctuations, where the green line is particle and cell. Uh, you can see that spectral spectrum decays and the, then it kind of breaks. It's where the particle noise uh, actually kicks in and there is nothing really you can do about this noise except to increase a lot of particles, but usually it's too demanding. And uh, DG follows the spectrum is pretty well when you, the red line is uh, third order DG. When you ho have a little bit low order DG, you still don't have noise, but it's a little bit diffusive. So uh, that's how error in discontinuous Galerkin is exhibited by uh, some numerical diffusivity. The important figure is on the right. This is the evolution of electromagnetic energy. So when vortices collapse, um, our Zach Tang test could be well explained with MHD uh, and kind of it just uh, energy and magnetic field grows due to when plasma compresses it. So you see the rise of this energy, this is more or less MHD process. But then when strong gradients of magnetic field forms, uh, the reconnection starts to kind of uh, work, which uh, mm, mostly rely on kinetic process. So the decrease in electromagnetic energy is uh, microscopic physics and uh, our discontinuous Galerkin code with reduced velocity space very well corresponds to particle and cell code which is fully kinetic. Uh, all right. So and in conclusion I would just say that uh, uh, spectral plasma solver is a unique framework and the probably the most, uh, the main feature is this fluid kinetic coupling which uh, allows you to incorporate as much microscopic physics as needed and uh, save a lot on degrees of freedom in the velocity space. 
And uh, my time is up. Uh, I will leave the conclusion. Thank you.